lights out. Come over to the properties. You'll see that I'm, call, I'm calling my description housing flashlight and I've saved it as housing. And of course I'm in inches because everything we're doing is in inches. And I am on page 5-33 of the book. And we are going to be starting on the front plane. And we're going to create a circle coincident to the origin. with a diameter of 4.375 and we're going to be extruding that 1.3 Just like that. And I'm going to save it. What page is that again? 5-33. Uh, three, three. And I am now on 5-34. And our next feature is going to be a loft. So already we're getting into cool features. Is there anybody who was not able to extrude this circle, 1.3? Is there anybody who needs help? Okay. So we're now on page 5-34. I'm going to create my first sketch for a loft. I'm just going to select this back side of the part. I'm going to say new sketch. I'm going to convert entities and basically all that did was just copied that, yep, just copied the circle and then I'm going to edge, exit the sketch. That's it. That's all I want for that sketch. Just that edge. Done. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an offset plane from this face going out in this direction 1.3 inches. Okay, so I'm going to come over to plane. I'm going to select this back face and I'm going to say I want it 1.3 inches that way. And green check. And I'm going to rename the plane Battery Loft so I can keep track of it. And I'm going to rename that sketch Loft Profile 1. Okay, and I'm going to save it. Okay. So this is where I'm at so far. So far I've got one sketch for my loft and I've got an offset plane. Anybody lost? Anybody needing help? Paul? Close? Okay. So I've got one sketch, one offset plane. Our second sketch for our loft is going to go onto that offset plane. So we're going to select the battery loft plane and we're going to go new sketch. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to um, kind of orbit it around so you can kind of see what I'm doing. All right. So here's the things because the book isn't really really clear on what to do. So the first thing I want to do is I want to copy this edge onto the battery loft sketch. So what should I use for that? Right. Convert entities. So I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to go convert entities and boom, popped over. See that? So I've got that. So that's good. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a center line that goes up 
from the origin up to the top of the sketch. Okay? So again, I'm going to show you what it looks like. All I did was I did convert entities to copy that edge, and then I drew a center line from the origin to the top of that circle. Anybody lost? You good? Okay, so now I'm going to draw a horizontal line and then a vertical line, just like that. Just two lines. Horizontal line, vertical line. Notice I made this line coincident with the center of the line. Anybody lost? Anybody needing help? Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fillet to this corner. And I've got a fillet tool right here on my sketch ribbon. So I'm going to select fillet and I'm going to change the radius to 0.1. And all I have to do is select that corner point and it will place the fillet. And I'm going to green check. And that's it. That's all I got. Was that, was that line that you drew the vertical one, is that no, we're gonna we're gonna deal with that later. Okay, we had the, right now it's kind of free floating. It's not coincident to anything. It's just kind of like that. It's flexy. Okay, we'll be dealing with that in a sec. Okay, everybody okay with the fillet? Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want to make this guy coincident to that to that arc okay all right so it's going to go like that so what I want to do is I want to mirror all of these this horizontal line the fillet and the vertical line around this center line. And I've got a mirror entities tool right here. Anybody see that? Yeah. So I'm going to select mirror entities. It'll ask me what do I want to mirror. I'm going to select the line, the horizontal line, the arc of the fillet, and line three. And on mirror about, I'm going to select this center line. and it'll preview it, and then I'm going to green check. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. Anybody lost? Anybody needing help? Yes, Makita. Either way, you could, do either. you could have done it that one too. You could have done it. Sure. Dynamic mirror. I would have clicked dynamic mirror first, but then drawn it. Now I'm going to add a dimension between the horizontal line and the origin, and I'm going to say 1.6. And then I'm going to add a dimension between the two vertical lines and say it's going to be 3.1. This is what you should have so far. I'm going to orbit it around a little. So notice that
where my circle is, I want to trim out this section of the arc, this section of the arc, and this section of the arc. Okay, so what I'm going to be left with is a shape that kind of looks like a baseball home plate. Okay, so the only part of the arc that I keep is right here at the bottom. So I'm going to go trim. I can use power trim and I'm going to trim here, here, and there. I'm done. So see my shape that's left? Looks kind of like a baseball plate. And I'm going to change this dimension to 0.5 to fill it. And then I'm going to add a 0.5 fillet at the bottom, here and there. Okay. So I changed this fillet to 0.5 and then I added a 0.5 fillet at the two corners on the bottom. Everybody good? Anybody lost needing help? Yeah. I, tri I trimmed out the arc. So the only part of the arc that I kept was right here. And then I changed the fillet to 0.5 on the top and then I added two fillets on the bottom. Nope, we're good. We good. Notice it says, what does it say down here? Fully defined. See the fully defined? Okay. So we're going to get out. I'm going to turn off the visibility of my plane because I don't really need to see it anymore. I exited the sketch. And this is going to be my loft profile too. And I'm going to save. <coughs> Anybody lost? So at this point, I've got two sketches. My first sketch is just the circle. My second sketch is this sketch right here that we just did that kind of looks like a baseball plate. And we're going to loft between the two sketches. Yes, Harvey? I see Good. Why don't we just put the five in? The point five? Yeah, the point five. To begin with? I don't know. Because <laughs> she didn't. Yeah. I guess she wants to see what happens if you change your mind. Right? I don't know. I don't know why she just didn't do it right to begin with. You can't write your own book. What? You gotta write your own book. I have, so I have been told <laughs> many times. <laughs> but there are a lot of SolidWorks books out there. I don't want to have to compete. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go loft. And remember in the loft we pick the profiles that we want to use for our loft. We got two profiles, do you remember? So I select loft profile one, and then I select loft profile two. And it lofts, and I go green check. And save it. So is everybody able to create their loft? Is there anybody who needs help? Okay. So 
Ready for the next feature? Okay, we're going to select the back face right here. We're going to go new sketch. We're going to select convert entities. And that's basically just going to copy a baseball plate outline, right? And then we're just going to extrude it. And we want to extrude it 4.4 inches with a taper or a draft of one degree. So you want to make sure you set it for 4.4 inches, one degree. And then green check. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to call this body. And I'm going to call the loft the neck. Starting to look like a flashlight? Starting to look like a flashlight. Was everybody able to get that extrude done? No? No? That's not what I want to hear. <coughs> not what I want to hear. Okay, next feature. We are on page 5-39. And we are going to add a shell. So we're basically going to empty out the flashlight so we have space for that big hunking battery we made, right? Okay, so we're going to click on shell. We're going to remove this front face. We're going to give it a thickness of 0.1, and we're going to green check. In orbit around, admire your fabulous flashlight. Same. Got a shell. For what? 0.1 thickness on the shell, which is the default. Point one. Okay. So this is how your flashlight should look at this point. Everybody good? Anybody lost? Needing help? Stephen, are you okay? Do you need Ron to come over and help you? No, I'm just I'm catching up. I'm waiting. Harvey, do you need help? Yeah, I'm Okay. So Harvey and Stephen need help. Yeah. And Paul. Okay. Alan, Alan. Okay, so we've got, so the next feature we're going to be doing is basically a shield. So when you're carrying your flashlight, your hand doesn't get all hot from the, from the bulb. Any of you ever experienced that? I know I have. <laughs> all right, so we want to get some kind of shield on there. In order to place that shield, we're going to cut, use the front plane. So notice where my front plane is. See that front plane where it's located in my flashlight? So I'm going to select front plane, new sketch. So I'm on the front plane, new sketch. And what I want to do is I want to select this inside circle, this one right here, and copy it into my sketch. So I'm going to use the convert entities. So I'm going to say convert entities and select this inside edge. Okay? And green check. And notice how it copied. Do you see it? Okay. And then I want to draw a circle from the center point. And that's going to be 5.125. So I've got two circles there, here and here. Okay? Now the small circle inside there, how did I get that? Convert entities from the inside edge. And then the second circle, I just drew a circle and added a dimension. <coughs> Can you tell if you have a 
How can you tell if you did the convert entities? Yeah. If you're really not sure, you can't see it. Because notice I can see my, see it right here. If I mouse over, notice it lights up. Okay, now if you don't see it, you can also switch to a wireframe view and you should really be able to see it then, right? Okay. All right, so now we're going to go extrude and we just want to extrude at point one. And we're going to say green check, and I'm going to call that shield. And save it. I just extruded it, point one. Okay, now I want you to look at your flashlight from this, from this angle, okay, this is um, my right side view, alright, so looking at it from the right side, remember we, tap we tapered the housing one degree, do you see the taper there? We, we did a one degree angle on that extrude, do you all remember that? Okay, do you see here how there's no extrude here? I mean, no draft on that first extrude. Do you see how it's not tapered? Okay, now our lens cap is going to be going on to that. Is our lens, does our lens cap have a taper? Yes. So we need to taper that, that front so that it won't create problems when we try to screw the lens cap on. Does that make sense? Okay, so we need to add a draft. All right. Does anybody remember the taper that we put on our lens cap? Five degrees. That ding ding ding. You got it right. So if you look on page five dash forty three, we're going to be adding a five degree draft. All right. So if you click on the draft tool right here, see where see where it is on the ribbon. Okay. So you're going to locate that draft tool. And it asks us for the degrees, so we're going to say 5 degrees, and then it asks us for a neutral plane. Our neutral plane will be just this little lip right here, and then the face that we're going to draft is going to be this cylindrical outside face, okay? So do you see the difference? See which ones I picked? I picked this for the direction for the draft face and right here for the direction to pull for the neutral plane. Got it? And then you're gonna green check. Okay, and you see the draft. I'm gonna go back to a right side view and I'm gonna switch to wireframe so you can kind of see it. See how it looks? I want you to compare what you see on the screen, what you see on page 5-43, and what you see on your screen. Make sure that it looks alike. Everything matches, lines up. You see the draft. Whoa, mine looked kind of weird now. Okay, see that? So I want you to take a minute to look at it. Everybody good? Anybody lost needing help? Okay, so now what we're going to be doing, we are on page 5-44, and we're going to be adding a thread to the inside, I'm sorry, to the outside of our housing so we can screw our lens cap on. Okay? Now, if you did not do the lens cap on Tuesday, you're not going to be able to do the thread because what we're going to do is we're going to 
take that profile that we created on the lens cap and we're going to copy it over to the housing so we don't have to redraw it. Right? So we're trying to be lazy and save some work. Because we all know how long did it take us to draw that little thread profile? What, about 15 minutes? Get it set up? It would be a lot easier to just copy and paste it from one part to another, right? So what, what were the steps we did for creating that thread on Tuesday? Does anybody remember? Uh, Sorry? Path. First we made the path. And what about a plane? Did we need to create a plane? Why do we need to create a plane? Does anybody remember? CSR and Yeah, so we can, so, and we need it, and we need the thread to be backed off a little bit from the beginning of the part so that it, the thread doesn't strip, right? So it's got some lead in, right? So we need to create an offset plane. So our first step is to create a thread plane, right? So we're going to come over, we're going to go plane. And we're going to select this front right here. And we're going to offset it into our part 0.125. And we want to, I'm having to click the flip right here, the flip button, to ensure that it actually is inside my part. All right, so notice I'm kind of doing a sanity check and making sure it's going into my part. So I went 0.125 and then I flipped it to make sure it was going into my part. And then I'm going to green check and I'm going to call this my thread plane. Okay, and I'm going to save. Was everybody able to create their offset plane? Anybody lost? Okay, so now we want to make a copy. Remember we had to convert entities? And we're going to select the outside. We're going to select the outside circle to control the diameter of our helical sweep. Because with our thread's going to go on the outside, right? So we're going to click on our thread plane, new sketch. I'm going to select this outside edge and I'm going to go convert entities. So you should see that circle right there on the thread plane. Right? Now we need to add that helical path. Does anybody remember how we get there? Anybody? Any ideas? No. Insert curve helix spiral. See, Ron knows. Okay, so we're going to go insert curve helix spiral. Okay, and notice the direction that mine's going. So I need to reverse the direction, right? And I want to change my pitch to 0.25 because that's the pitch that we used on the lens cap. And I want to give it 2.5 turns. Okay, and I need to taper it, right? And let me switch to um, top view so you can see. See how it's tapering? See how it tapers with my draft. So I have that five degrees. So I have 0.25, I reverse directions, 2.5, 180 degrees, and I made a five degree tapering outward. Everybody there? Anybody needing help? Well, I'm sitting back there doing nothing, so if you need help, make sure you let him know. <laughs> Seven guys 
struggling? Uh, way behind. Way behind. Way behind. So they're going to have to catch up during yeah, the lap. I have to help you? You got lost, huh? Uh, I think it is uh, quite like a shell. It says it has minuscule voids. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I got to troubleshoot it. Okay. Yeah. So we got a green check. Okay. So I'm going to rename that thread path. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of my plane because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to save it. Okay. So at this point, everybody's got a thread path except for the people who are way, way far behind. Okay. Right. We'll probably be stopping after this, this thread. So now what I want you to do is, if you have the lens cap, I want you to open up your lens cap part. Okay, this is where if you named your, your features, it's going to make life a lot easier for you, right? Because I come over to my thread, I open up my thread, and notice I have a sketch called Thread Profile. Okay, so that's going to make it really, really easy. And so I'm going to highlight the thread profile. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to either I can either go edit copy or I could go control C. Either one works. Okay. So I locate my thread profile sketch. And then I'm going to come up to Edit Copy or Control C, either way. Okay, I want Edit Copy. Then I went come back to my housing, and I'm going to go to my top plane and go highlight my top plane and go Edit Paste or Control V. And there'll be a slight pause, and you'll see the sketch. See the sketch? See it? Okay. I can drag it. I'm going to right-click on the sketch and go Edit Sketch. See, there it is. And I'm just going to I'm just going to drag it out of the. I'm just going to try and drag it out of the way because it's not constrained to anything. I should be able to move it. Oh man, come on. So there it is. I just kind of moved it off the off the part. See that? So I just kind of nudged it off. Now what I want to do is I want to I need to pierce it onto the onto the helical path, but I want it so that the thick end is against the part, this side, and this is coming out of the part. So I'm going to drag it the other way. Right, so I want to drag it so it's on the other side. Yep. Sorry? I just I just windowed around it, picked a point, and I started dragging it. How did you get it into? I did the edit copy. Remember? Control C, Control V. Yeah. Control C. Okay, so it really doesn't want to move it over there. I may have to use my move. <coughs> right click, move entities. Click there, click there. Okay, so it moved. All right. So I moved it over, and now what I want to do is I want to put this midpoint pierced to that endpoint. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go add relation. I'm going to select this endpoint right here, and then I'm going to select this curve. And I'm going to say Pierce. And it popped right on there for me. See that? 
and I'm going to exit my sketch and I'm going to say thread profile there it is and now I'm going to do a swept boss face to create my thread so I'm going to go swept boss face my profile is going to be that thread profile and my path is going to be the thread path and then I'm going to go green check and there it is I'm going to save it and I'm going to call this thread okay And I am going to stop here. And on next Tuesday, we're going to create the handle and the inside ribs. Okay? So this is housing part one.